All right, kids, this is us coming to you from Sneep's lair. Not the wolf lair, the Sneep lair this time. So I guess <laughs> we've been asked to, what have we been asked? To ask, answer some questions. We've got a nice list of questions that you guys send in and uh, I guess we're gonna get right to it. Yeah, I guess so. So I don't know how this is gonna work. We've never done this before. So <laughs> sorry guys, we're gonna wing it, okay? So I guess I'm just gonna start here. Andy, first question. What's your favorite Accept album you've produced? Also, do you have any favorite Accept song you've worked on? Uh, I think... Hmm, I mean, Blood of the Nations is good, because obviously it was, we are kind of getting the ball rolling on it, weren't it's got we? a certain, I actually listened to that the other day, man. It has a certain... We were just talking about it. It had a great spirit on that album. Yeah. Um, Oh, favorite song. I mean, it's been a lot now, hasn't it? Um, <laughs> Five albums. Maybe. Yeah, I thought Undertaker was good, j really, just because it was a little different um, to produce. Uh, oh, I don't know, really. Oh. Come on, you like them all. I mean, Teutonic Terror as well. The way that song kind of came about. That was the way that we remember the, the original sort of writing session we had on that, and then we the way it was sort of pieced together and. It grew into what it was. Um, yeah. I mean, all the songs, the, the, the way we, we, again, we were talking about this the other day, the way they start, and um, it's like the writing session we've just been doing this week, you know, it, it's, it's just great fun. It's one of the reasons why I got into production was that the, the creative aspect of it coming together and, um, you know, seeing a song build and, and the final result, and, you know, you've actually got this little entity of its own at the end of the little, day. So, a little, little baby gets born. Yeah, so I mean, it's like, you know, it's like naming your favourite child that. You can't do that. You, you, you put as much into each song as you can, so... No, I'm not going to answer that one. But I think... Lame, uh, lame, know, I think, uh, Album-wise, I think Blood of the Nation, because it got the ball rolling. Right on. And I actually think the last album as well, because it was such a challenge with COVID and we still made it work. That's right. Um, we, you know, we did a lot of stuff. Sort of, I was operating the, the, the computer in Nashville from here, and we, you know, we had it all. We figured all these different ways of working. Um, the Wi Fi broke down all yeah, the time, yeah. that was fun. And we well, started it in Nashville, and we were stuck there. You know, it was, you know, it was a lot of challenges, but we, we got through it. I think that sort of showed on the end result. So, uh, really good Blood times, of, yeah, good times. Yeah, Blood of the Nations and the last one as well. Yeah, good answer. Thank you, yeah. sir. All right, your turn, Wolf. How do you find inspiration for good riffs? Other songs, music you listen to? Dreams, question mark. As you can imagine, that's been often asked. And the answer is, I don't really know. Lame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is lame. Because <laughs> sometimes you just sit down and a, a riff pops out of nowhere. And it's, it's kind of a magic time when it happens. But it happens, you know, to me, riffs is always the easy part. Isn't it, isn't it you buy a new guitar? Isn't that that's that what you is, say, yeah, not for me so much. If I can get one good riff out of this guitar, it's paid for itself. That's why you got 47 I'm guitars. Still looking for a riff. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, riffs is easy to me. I, I don't know why. To sit down and riffs have hundreds, maybe, I don't know. They're, it's uh, easy, but then what do you do with that riff? That's the magic. That's where it gets tricky. You've yeah. got the riff, and then you got to make a complete song out of it. Because the riff alone doesn't make a song, no. as, as we all know. So anyhow, and I can tell you also, um, I never have ideas in my dreams. Do you? Uh, yes, I have actually. Um, I've had melodies where I've got up and sang the melody into my phone, and it's absolute garbage. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it was genius at the time. You know, like the dream makes sense when you wake up, but for about 30 seconds. <laughs> and then, it, but, but it was a bit, I mean, I had this hit record that I was singing into my phone and it, it wasn't. I tell you why I have ideas <laughs> very often, oddly enough, is in the shower. Yeah. I mean, I get up in the morning, when I take a hot shower in the morning and I, I start humming something that I've been working on and another idea pops in my head and then sometimes I just run to the computer and record it. I'll tell you what... Butt I'm, naked, by the way. Um, <laughs> one thing, uh, talking about dreams, I, I dream about working. Uh, mm. You know, if I've had a, a long day in the studio, um, especially from jet lags as well, I'll, I'll, I'll find myself in my dreams trying to patch something in in a patch bay and I've had dreams where I'm actually 
inside Pro Tools, physically <laughs> moving waveforms around, you know, big blocks. Okay, um, you should see somebody about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so uh, yeah, it, it does, um, <laughs> it, 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 I think it's your, your mind resetting, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah, well, I, speaking of dreams, what, or I have it very often when we work late into the night on a song or something. Yeah. I, I, that in my dreams, or in my, I can't properly sleep. I, 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 I need a little time before I go to sleep yeah, to yeah, just yeah. sort of wind down. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, the music just keeps going overnight. Yeah. It's, it's horrible. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, that was that question answer. Okay. I, I think. Yeah, maybe. that was good. I think it was good. Yeah. All right. Andy, can you add a deeper sound to the bass and drums without compromising the integrity of the song? That's from Nelson Ariel Lopez. Um, I'm not quite sure what this question means, really, but I think, um, I mean, if you're talking about the low end of things, it really depends, I find, on the speed of the song. Um, there's lots of tricks um, with the faster stuff to get the low end to work. Uh, you know, the way you compress the low end on certain fast sections and uh, maybe filter the low end a little bit on the kicks and trying to get the, you know, you can't have a load of, you, you can't have a big rock sound for a sort of a thrashier sound, a uh, thrashier song. So I'm not quite sure what you mean by this, but I think, um, I mean, you know, a lot of low end on a fast song will compromise the mix, if that's what you're saying. Um, so, you know, it's, there's a lot of balancing things out and getting a, a basic sound that will work for the song and then you know, sort of pushing it to the limits, really. I, I think uh, it, 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 it's something you learn as you go along. If you can mix, I think if you can mix the fast, the metal stuff, you, you've usually got quite a good understanding of the way low end works. Um, and then in, in more of a straight 4-4 four, four rock song, you can definitely get more in there. Um, so I'm not sure if that answers the question. I don't, I don't... Let's say it did. Yeah, okay. Let's say it did. Four, Wolf. Um, will there be any classical themes in the new album, like in Metal Heart, Final Journey, and Saxon and Delilah? There might be. There might be. I mean... So nothing yet, is there? Nothing yet, and a lot of times that comes last. Mm. Um, and actually, I have a small list of ideas. Ava actually sent me some stuff that I should try out, and I guess it all depends on, yeah, the mood and, and whatever the song asks for. Uh, on this last album, it was uh, a symphony of pain, and, and we decided to make it about Beethoven, and obviously then you want to put some Beethoven stuff in it. And it kind of fell into peace, but I'm never trying to, to cram anything into a song just so I can say, oh, we need a classical thing. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, that wouldn't wouldn't be the right thing to do. If it works, it works, and if, if not, then no. So we'll see. We'll have to wait and see. Um, Andy, do yourself yourself. Do you see yourself making another album of your own material in a style similar to Sabbath or even something closer to Hell? Um, well. Uh, I did write nearly a full album's worth of material for another Hell album, um, which didn't really, uh, I mean, I've, I've, obviously I've still got it, but it didn't make it through the light of day. The Hell thing kind of wound down. It, we, we sort of felt it. It went we, to Hell. It froze over, yeah. Um, not, not for any... It just sort of life got in the way of it really with you know certain members and family commitments and it was it kind of just reached the end of the line um, so I've got a ton of material um, how I'll use it or if I ever use it I don't know um, some good stuff so uh, yeah maybe maybe sometime in the future I've kind of been a bit busy so it's a definite maybe I'd, I'd give it a maybe I'd like I'd like to use it at some point I think all right your question all right uh, Wolf you said the shows with symphony. Uh, sorry. You said that the shows with a symphony orchestra was one of your lifetime, lifelong dreams. Now that you've done it, is there something new on your dreams to do list uh, to, to aim for? Hmm. You mean a bucket list kind of thing? Mm. Musical bucket list. Um, not really, to be honest. Um. And we're so busy with what we do and I mean this the symphony uh, tour was something so out of the ordinary and so involved that I'm almost I was almost fun and glad to, to to go out as a 
five piece band or six piece band now and not have to deal with all the logistics of, of the symphony and uh, all the production and stuff. But it was definitely a dream come true. Yeah, sure. I, no, I, I think that is, I'd like to do some that again someday. Mm. Maybe in a different, slightly different format. And, and, and Ava and I have been working on some stuff, so maybe that, that will be performed one day soon. But yeah, I don't really have a, another big chunk of like a big production kind of idea like that in mind currently. We'll see. Let's see, what else do we have? Andy, uh, it's said that in the songwriting of Blood of the Nations, you made Wolf and Peter focus on what is essential and accept. What was it? And, and has your opinion changed in the past decade? Um, well, it was really, because um, we were kind of starting from scratch and we didn't know each other that well, uh, it was really a way of getting the ball rolling on the production. Um, and I, I think it, you know, because you guys have been off the scene for so long. Right. I think it was important just to sort of get a grounding of where I thought the band should be coming from and what, you know, because I was such a big Accept fan as a kid. Um, I knew what I wanted to hear as a fan. And I think it, that, as a producer, it's important, um, you know, to sort of let the band know w w what direction you should think it should be going in. Um, see if everyone's reading off the same hymn sheet really right um and there was there was quite a few things wasn't there that, that, that you mean, hadn't I, really thought of from a fan point of view i mean we had written anything let it just flow out and there was a bunch of poppy stuff and there's stuff some stuff some that sort of some, zz top type stuff wasn't zz there? top some other sort yeah. of influences that, that didn't really, there were nice little tunes or ideas, but they didn't really sound like except. Some there, there, there were some ideas which end, ended up on the album, but just needed twisting a little bit, didn't it? To give it that except feel. That's so often. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Even like, you know, um, you know, once we started working with Mark, because Mark's such a capable singer, we, there was certain parts where we even took the melody out the vocal a little bit more and put it into the music behind it, wasn't it? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of the, yeah, you know, the, the, the O sections and, and just, just little sort of things I'm, that, that, that I you, you, you realize. No, you, know, you always said, I remember you saying, make it sound more German. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and to us, yes. it was like, what do you mean? Yeah. What's more German? What does that even mean? Yeah, but... It's more regimented, <laughs> you know, a little bit more cold. <laughs> oh, fuck you! <laughs> All right, don't we have that clear enough. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Wolf and Andy, when uh, when you were done with Blood of the Nations, did you feel it was uh, like it was going to be as successful? What was that question? Number eight, no? Do you not have that? Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. So yeah. when you were done with Blood of the Nations, did you feel like it was going to be as successful as it was? I, I remember, no. well, I remember thinking we've got a great record here. Um, because Why didn't you say so? I did. No, you I never did. do. No, I did. I did. And actually, I will... Do you remember this? No one at first was interested, were they? No, of course not. Um, and I, I came on... Actually, going back a, a, a half a year or eight months or a year, whenever it was, this all came about because you'd done those demos with Mark, wasn't it? And we got posted on Blubber now. Yeah, yeah. Um, we got slaughtered we got for it. got slaughtered him. for it. And I knew, uh, I, we've told the story a little bit, but I knew Ed, who was Wolf's web guy. Um, and I, I said, you know, yeah, put me in touch with Wolf because I, you know, I want to see if we can work with these guys. Right. Um, so I went over to Nashville, met Wolf, um, met Mark. And we, we and Peter. Yeah, and we did all this off our own back without any label, wasn't it, to start off with? Yeah, we didn't have anything. No, and it was kind of just let's see what where we can take it. And I, I really genuinely thought when we finished it and we approached the labels, we get snapped up straight away. And at first no one wanted to know, did they? Because it, it was you yeah. know, obviously a different lineup. Um, and it was it wasn't until Gotts Cunningham from uh, it was at Rock Hard, wasn't it? Got Rock Hard, yeah, yeah. Um, the, a German journalist came on board and actually went, this is actually killer. You know, I didn't expect the band to be able to do this. Um, once 
Someone, a respected guy in the music industry said that, all of a sudden everyone was snapping at it, weren't they? And the, yeah, I don't remember the exact event, but I remember first everybody was uh, like dead set against it, oh, it's never gonna work, and yeah. then when the album actually, when they heard it, and it, and, and, and surely when it came out, it was all, the winds had changed by yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, so... It was crazy times, I remember. Yeah, but I remember feeling confident about it. I remember thinking we've, we've really put a lot into this, and... Yeah, um, see, and I was totally insecure because I'd been away for so long, and yeah. we had a new singer, and everything was new, and maybe, and I was prepared for it to go e either way, but I, I always figured, Hey, we we'll put our best effort into it, and so you can do it. Then. What do we have to lose? Why yeah. not? I mean, if we don't try it, it's sure enough. So I felt good about it either way. Mm. You know. So yeah. Yeah. Mm. So then, number uh, nine. Yeah. Uh, Wolf. How are we doing on time here? Oh, we're doing okay. Fine. Wolf. What is Accept best album? The most overrated. The uh, most overlooked. The dreaded question, I get this all the time and I never know what to say because you said it earlier, they're all yeah. my babies in a way. I know the albums in the 90s are generally considered the weakest ones and I probably would have to agree, but really, is, is there... I mean, I always think it's not really up to me to rate them because I, I do my best in the studio and writing these songs and, and then you release them to the public and then it's up to the fans to decide what to do with them. But at the time when I record something or when we work on something, we always think it's killer. Mm. And then later on you find out, well, maybe other stuff was more killer. <laughs> you know, so we've had those experiences, all of us. But um, yeah, so I don't really know if there's anything that's totally underrated and overrated. It's, it's not my job really to say. Mm. I know, it's kind of lame, sorry. Andy. Uh, except for using a TS, which I guess means two screamer, do you ever treat guitar DIs? Oh god, it gets pretty technical, guys. Yeah. To get a clearer mic signal, when would you favor a 73 over an API 312? Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, yeah, someone's recording. Yeah. 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 For the actual exhibit A and B rhythm guitar recordings that ended up on the album, what amp mic mics mic? Yeah. Do you remember? No. Uh, <laughs> right, uh, same question about the mastering chain on accept uh, when using the SSL component. Oh, 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 right, here we go. Right, okay. Uh, do I ever. Right, DIs. Always use the best DI you can. Um, do I clear up the mic signal? I just record a DI properly. Um, when would you favour 73 over an API? Apples and oranges, really. Uh, for the actual exhibit A, B rhythm guitars, uh, let's see, what did we use? We used the. Uh, what do you actually mean by that? Exhibit A, uh, B. That's an, what? The Exodus albums, ex oh, exhibit okay. A and B. Okay. I think we used an Angle Savage on one and something else on the other. Um, uh, Mike's, well, it would have been vintage 30s in, in some sort of Gary's cabs and 57s. Um, Master and Chain, God knows, I can't remember. Um, SSL comp on the Master, do you usually use slowest attack and fastest release? Uh, yes, uh, at sort of two, two to one or four to one. Uh, thank you for all the amazing productions. Thank you. Next question. I have no idea what you were just no, talking about. Because <laughs> I'm not a technical, technical guy, yeah, and that's why I gladly leave all that stuff to you. Yeah, but I, I know I, you I, like fiddling I, with gear. I, can't, I do I, not. I can't remember what I was doing yesterday, never mind um, Beautiful. Yeah, five years ago or ten years ago, whenever yep. that was. Yeah. All right, number 11. Ah, it's up to you. Yeah. Wolf, what happened to the live DVD plans for the concert in Plovdiv with the Symphony Orchestra? Uh, well, they're sitting safe and sound in the archives and maybe one day they will be mixed and released. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with these recordings. <laughs> What's that mean? Money. <laughs> no, it's been, it's been paid for. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, it's always up to the label to decide. It's not really up to us to decide when and where and why to release stuff. It's, there's, there's geniuses at work at the record label and they will have a say in this also. So maybe one day when the time is right, then it might get released. And that's all I have to say about that. Yeah. Up to you. 12, how did you meet each other? Well, you kind of said it earlier. It well, through our... We met before that. You said, but I don't remember. But I've you got, have a picture. Yeah, I've you got have a photo picture. evidence. Yes, yeah. we you met. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it was back in uh, 1988 when 
Yeah. Uh, Udo's first, was it Animal House, that first one? Yeah. Yeah, we, Sabbath supported Udo. Um, we were on the European tour. And you got kicked off. By Gabby. <laughs> yeah. Gabby, who was managing Udo still at the time, kicked us off the tour after two dates for being too heavy. Um, I don't think that's For being quite, too good. I, no, <laughs> The fact that another band bought their way onto the tour, I think, might have had something to do with it. Hmm. Um, but that's where we first met, because you came to... What I, I didn't have anything to do with any of this. You came to Dusseldorf. Oh. Is it, was it tour... No, not, uh, was it Dusseldorf? Is it tour three, the old venue? Uh, I can't... Uh, it, I, doesn't mm. matter. You came Somewhere. to... No, Bonn. It was in Bonn, because Bruce Dickinson was there as well, fencing for it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. was well, he's in the picture, right? Yeah, yeah. So there's me, you and Bruce, and Jorg Fisher in the picture. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's where we first met, on that tour. See, yeah. if we had our shit together, we should put up the picture now. Yeah, it's online somewhere, you can find it. Okay, yeah. right on. Yeah. So that's where we first met, but then many moons later, many years later, in 2000, was it eight or nine? When did we meet? Nine, I think, isn't it? We might start working in eight and then we did the album in nine. Something like that. Uh, yeah, through a mutual friend, Ed Aborn, who I knew quite well because he did my website and he was a bit of a, yeah. I knew him through Fosley and Chris Jericho because he, he was friends with Chris and that's yeah. how we sort of met. It's a small world sometimes. Yeah. And he introduced us and the rest is history. And now we have to put up with each other. <laughs> On occasion, anyhow. Yeah. Andy, any chance you will play with Accept Live? Well, we have jammed, haven't we? I've yeah. got up a couple of times yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and done Balls to the Wall with you. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll do that again if, it, if the chance came up. Let's um, do it. Yeah. We've got to work on your hip swing. It's, remember? It's, I, like I've been practicking. I've been yeah, pra I yeah, know. You should, have, yeah, yeah. should be in good... Deep freeze things, you know, get, gets, the, gets the hips moving. Yeah. All right. Yeah, all right. Wolf, you are my guitar hero. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a person who, due to... Depression moved away from music, but now with help, I'm getting better and taking up music again. What advice uh, would you give? Do you ever think that the future will be? Uh, like, you will be a great influence. Oh, okay. For future generations, how does it make you feel? Oh my God. Um... I'd say you, you. Yeah, I mean. Oh, did you ever think in the future you'd be? That in the future I would right. be great. No, I mean. It's a huge honor, of course, if people say that, um, and it makes me very humble and happy and all that. But it's not really something that's ever on, on my radar, to be honest. You don't really wake up in the morning and think you're a, like a guitar hero. Or it's actually anything. quite strange, isn't it, when it, that, that, that situation when you meet fans who are absolutely um, shaking when they meet you. Yeah, I mean, because well, yeah, we were fans of music. That's we still are. And I, I, I met, you know, I remember when I was 12, 13, 14 years old, got elite bands and you being met, in that situation. You met Gary Moore, didn't you? And he turned it off, turned it down. Gary Moore was not kind to his fans when I, that night I met him. Um, yeah, yeah. I well, still me, tell that story. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. It's a good, told good me. lesson that actually. Yeah, so I'm always trying to be nice to people. I mean, yeah. you can't always be, you can't always shake hands with everybody. That it's just sometimes practically not possible, but. Mm. But anyhow, uh, I mean, being an influence on other players is, is a huge honor, of course. Mm. Uh, but this sort of happens slowly over time. And one day you wake up and people call you an influence. But it's not something that you work on or that you can work on or something that happens planned in a way. Mm. It, it's just sort of all of a sudden you realize it. I remember actually in the 80s when we made all these albums that have influenced so many people like like Restless and Wild and Breaker. We didn't have a clue. I mean we just went on about our business in Germany and Solingen and did a few shows around Europe and just to be honest, we, 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 yeah, with it not being like the internet is no. today, we, you had no way of it was knowing years, quite how it was hitting people, did you? No, yeah. no, not at all. Year because back then all you had was magazines mm. and you know that you had no contact to fans anywhere. Mm. 
And it was years later that people told us, man, when I listened to Restless and Wild and Fast as a Shark, it changed my life. And they were like in California or yeah. somewhere. And yeah. To be honest, how, those how would albums, we know? Those albums changed my life. You know, there you I was, go. Yeah, I was growing up and I was just a merciful fan. Sorry for that. Yeah, I accept. <laughs> Sorry for messing up your life in my, part. My chemistry exam failed miserably because of Restless and Wild. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Love it. Okay, next one maybe, huh? Uh, uh, 15. Are you going to have a recording session in the US and then Andy mix in the UK? Uwe's parts in Germany or everyone in the studio and Andy producing and mixing in the UK or somewhere else? I guess it's a little bit of everything. Yeah, I mean, what do you think? Well, I think we, we, we were talking about this earlier. I mean, we've been doing demos here in the UK. Um, you know, Wolf's been over at Uber's place in Germany working with him. Um, we'll probably end up doing the drums over in Nashville. Um, we'll get Mark over to Nashville soon, I yeah. guess. So um, I'd say the bulk of the recording will get done in Nashville and I'll mix it back here. You know, it's easier for me to mix it here. I know know the room, I've got all the gear that I need. Um, and really, when we do it that way, it works well, doesn't it? Because uh, don't, I don't want to sit here when you mix no, or anybody mixes. No, no. It's just boring. You just send me the, the, yeah. the, the, the mixes. And yeah, we, we, we do this, there's this um, function utility now called Audio Movers where we can actually stream backwards and forwards so you can hear live um it, yeah you know, if you did any little four, tweaks four, i think we did that a couple yeah. times when you said you mean it like this just a little tweak and we, we, you know we've got zoom working at the side so we can communicate so it's, it's really as though wolf sat here you know when we've got the mix to a point where we it's just doing the fine details it's easy isn't it so, yeah 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 so there's that hmm 16. Uh, what are your favorite non-metal artists and bands? The Police. The Police? No, a bit of my, a secret thing of mine. Yeah, I grew up listening to the Police. Oh, police. Yeah. Remember when we saw that Police cover band in Nashville? They were yeah. great, weren't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah. Um, what do I say? Um, the classical stuff, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a, everybody knows I'm a classical fan more than anything. Mm. And the, another little secret of mine is I don't really listen to much music. That's a little odd to a lot of people, but I really enjoy it. peace and quiet. I get it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I work on my stuff, yes, but and then yeah, if it's not that, then I don't. I don't really ever put on a record and really study it or listen to it. it sometimes it's just a lot of times in the car. It's just streaming, Spotify. Cuban techno I've been listening to lately. <laughs> Weird shit like that. Whatever yeah, I mean, I puts me in a good mood. Sometimes really mariachi like, music, whatever. I, I don't care. Yeah, I don't really listen to non-metal. It's you know. It's, I do. Yeah, you know, I don't. I, I you know, it's a really classic rock with me that I, I listen to. You know, the early yeah. early eighties. But do you ever like li turn when you drive to the supermarket? Do you ever turn turn on music? I've got the Number of the Beast album. That's <laughs> all I listen to in my car. Really. It's all I listen to. Okay. That and Melissa by Merciful Fate, yeah. Nice, yeah. okay. So I, I've got two CDs. You're more of a metal freak yeah, yeah. than I am. Sorry. Yeah. Is that, no, not sorry. I'm not <laughs> sorry for anything. Sorry. <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right. Would you ever consider releasing a Sneep except Kemper profile pack? No. Um, yeah, I've been asked that. No. Yeah, no, I, I, I've sort of steered clear from doing this sort of thing. I just... Um, just want to keep things a little bit more exclusive, really. I mean, I, I don't obviously do my own profiles when I'm using a camper. Um, but I think, you know, you should really, really just strive to do your own thing, really. I don't want to start giving guitar tones away and stuff that I, you know, why, why people employ me at the end of the day. I know that sounds a bit hard nose, but I think, um, I, I think it's, I think it's something to keep things a little bit more exclusive, really. Um, Makes sense to me, yeah. I mean, there's so many good pa camper packs out there anyway. Does it? Does the world need a, another 5150 profile or some more Marshall profiles? I think there's plenty of stuff out there if you're looking for it. So. Also, uh, I would say it's not really always in just the profile. I mean, it, it's really, say it again and again, it's who plays it, not, not so much what what is played through. Mm. Uh, it's really in the hands of the player a yeah. lot of times. How we play, what we play. and uh, People think that's a cliche, but it's not. Absolutely not at all. You know, it's really, when, at the end of the day, you're, you're amplifying these, aren't you? It's, it's this bit, your hands, it's the way you grip the guitar, it's what you do with it. Um, and a lot of times people get 
the performance model up with the tone as well. I think people, sure, you, you know, people like the sound because they like the song or they like what the guitar player is playing. Um, Best example is that I always say balls to the wall. Yeah. How did you get that sound? Well, it's in the riff mostly. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like in the song, the way it's played with open strings and how it, it's just, uh, yeah. there's really not, not a magic ingredient in this mostly. I mean, people like sometimes like to say, oh, special mixer, engineer, studio, it all plays a role, but really the biggest ingredient you, is... You could take that, if you had that sound profile, I guarantee it wouldn't work for 90% of the people. No, it wouldn't. That played to it. I know, you know? It. I know yeah. it would. So... Anyhow. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Andy. Yeah. Uh, have you... That's you, right? Yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever heard the first mix of Russian Roulette? Was it so bad to change? Was it so bad to change by Mark Dodson? What did he mean? I don't know. Did Mark mix it twice? Or was it mixed twice, that album? I don't remember. Uh, somebody... Sorry, these kind of things I do not remember. I know you worked on it. Mark, yeah, Mark mixed that one, didn't they? You mixed it initially, though. I don't know. Did Michael mixed it initially, maybe. No, no idea. Sorry, kids, I don't remember. Yeah. It's too many moons ago. What, do you, what did you do uh, for 30 years ago? Yeah, what, what did you have for Sunday lunch? Yeah. <laughs> 35 years ago. Yeah. I do not remember, sorry. Wolf. Yes. Uh, what, what are a few of the most important things to becoming a better guitar player, should one memorize the pentatonic scales? There's only one. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's only one. Yeah. Um, what is important? Um, many things, really. Find out what you want to do and what you're good at, is usually my advice. Don't try to be everything to everybody and, you know, because um, I'm not a very versatile player, for instance. I can do certain things, and those I think I can do quite well, but if you ask me to do something else, like, for instance, I don't even know what these scales all mean. I just play what sounds good to me and what works. After a while, you sort of figure out where the notes are on the neck, and I'm basically self-taught and all this stuff, and I, I, I never really went to school for all these modes and what, things. What made me a better guitar player is playing with other musicians. Well, that's for sure. That, that is that I think that's is the, the biggest jump because that'll push you. Um, and I think getting doing the band thing um, really gives you a, a broader scope, you know, on, on performance. And you know, there's so there's so many ingredients to being a good guitar player. It's not just sitting there shredding. You know, you've got to be able to perform in front of a crowd and. Or just hold the tempo, or, or yeah. just just be just blend into a band with other musicians is is important. You yeah, know? just noodling away in the bedroom is not gonna make you. Well, it, you know, obviously it's, it's it, gonna do something, but you know, if yeah. You, my advice would also be join a band and start rehearsing together because that's gonna open up everything and it's gonna show you whatever you need to work on. You yeah, know, because other people will notice it and you feel you're gonna get called out. I remember like. When we first got together in the rehearsal room all these years, I was, yeah, I definitely noticed, shit, like, they're better than me, or this, you can do that better, and you all of a sudden, you know, it pushes you. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, you know, it does. So, play together. Mm. Okay. Andy and Wolf, what are the two metal songs you wished you had recorded? Ooh. Ooh. Maybe something like uh, for me would be maybe like I don't know the, Highway to a, Hell yeah, or something. Is, there, is the royalties on the song? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, um, I mean, Back in Black is a, a great album as well, isn't it? I yeah, mean, th those oh, yeah. songs were so well done. I mean, it's, it's universal. We all like the early ACDC yeah. stuff. There's no doubt. Yeah. Um, and I'm also, also a huge fan of uh, British Steel. Mm. I mean, I listen to that album more than anything, Judas Priest. Yeah. They've got some great stuff on there. Yeah, I was, Classic. I was, I was saying the other day that the, uh, just telling Wolf, that, they, that the guys wrote and recorded that in 28 days, which I find it. Wrote amazing. and recorded? Yeah. Oh, I thought just recorded. No, they went into, um, uh, it was John Lennon's old house, uh, that was a recording studio where they, they uh, mixed 
um, on Eastern and the East. Huh. Just set up, and did it live as a band, 28 days, bashed Beautiful. it out, which is, which is brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, uh, hmm, I don't know what I'd say to that. But, um, certainly some of those Priest records, you know, Screaming for Vengeance, British Steel. I, I tell you which song I would like to have written. It's not a metal song, sorry, but Imagine by John Lennon. Mm. I think it's the most brilliant lyrics, and I don't know, it's one of those songs where I thought, damn, I wish I would have written that. It's clever, right? Beautiful and mm. clever. And mm. All of that. Andy, does the meaning of life have something to do with beer? I guess not. No. That's an odd one, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Been a while, been a while since I've had a beer now. Yeah, so, uh, we're both of the of the alcohol. Yeah, nearly eight years now. So six years for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right. Yeah. Used it used to. It used to. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Me too. Yeah. 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 Um. What do you do together behind the scenes when not working? Nothing. No. We only work and then we go go yeah. home. <laughs> yeah. Talk guitars. Yeah. That's, uh, no, actually we. I only talk talk gear a lot. Yeah, yeah. I guess every time we, we talk each other, call each other yeah. after a while, it's like one of the first questions. Yeah. Did you buy anything? Any, did you get any new toys? Yeah, I mean, any? We're, we're always talking business and, and about the scene, aren't we? We're always sort of, you know, having a bit of a chat. I'd say we... We went bowling in Nashville. Yeah. That was that kind of fun. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Yeah. What um, else did we ever do? I think that was about it, really, wasn't it? Oh, uh, we're lame. We're yeah. boring. But it's always, actually, it's always music-based, really, isn't it? Because it's, you know, whenever we get together, it's always to make records, but we do, uh, you know, we do bump into each other when we're out on festivals and stuff. I actually, I've come to stay in Nashville a few times when I've been passing through, haven't I? Yeah. Just so, um, yeah. That kind of stuff. But there's no knitting circle or anything that, no. we, that we've joined. No, 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 it's no always, real hobbies or anything. So we're sort of talking metal and, and gear, really, guitars. So, yeah. Well, kids, we've come to the end of this wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you very much. I guess we're going to give it back to the headquarters now and uh, we'll see you out there soon. Is that it? Any any favorite last, any any last? Do you want to hear a new track? No! <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. We can't. There you go. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Sorry, we can't. In, old day, in the old days, we could, you know, do test gigs yeah. and all that. You can use your Apple Watch to switch it off now. I will. Look, yeah. I'm Quite fancy. Metal watch. Metal watch, but... Where's the app? No, it's not working. Okay. <laughs>